Welcome everybody to today's webinar. Become a process hero, hear how from our customer panel. My name is Shay O'Connor. I'm an SVP at Flowforma and your host for the webinar today. Um, and I really want to welcome everybody along. This is very exciting for us because it has been born from the success of our recent ebook, Six Ways to Automate Processes and Accelerate Digital Transformation. We wanted to do something similar in a webinar format. And we're delighted that you all joined us today. And we actually have a panel together of our customers, real world flow former customers who are our, our current process heroes. And today they're just gonna share with us some of their insights and some of their experiences uh, from their digital transformation and what it really means to them. Now, before we kick off, I just need to do some uh, housekeeping for you and uh, and offer a couple of tips. So the webinar has been recorded and if you've trouble logging into any audio or have any other issues during the webinar, you can email info at flowforma.com for support just there on the screen. And throughout the webinar, just to let you know, your lines will be muted, but you can use the Q&A function to ask questions. And we'll try and answer as many of them at the end uh, of this webinar and those that we can't get around to hopefully we can also we may be able to answer them offline as well and, and send you some updates so this is going to be a very interactive webinar with polls throughout so you're going to be uh, asked a couple of questions throughout the the process and it'd be great if you could get involved it really give us uh, super feedback on um, your opinions uh, and after the webinar we'll send a copy of the recording to everyone and we'd appreciate it if you could uh, also complete a, a short feedback form at the end and only take a moment and because we really do value your feedback so uh, without further ado um, I'd like to introduce you to our panelists for today so uh, today we have three trends that we are going to uh, be covering three topical trends and we have uh, coincidentally three panelists uh, with us today. So Dustin Ray, to kick off with, is a business process analyst at McKinley Irvine, one of the largest divorce and family law firms in the US Northwest. He's joining us from their Seattle office, which means he got up really early, and uh, he'll be sharing his experiences of driving McKinley's digital transformation strategy. Thanks for joining Hello. us today, Dustin. Hello, good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> good. Hope that coffee is kicking in. Oh, it's doing great. Um, good. <laughs> we also have James James Morgan. Uh, he's the IT manager at the A14 Integrated Delivery Team, and that happens to be the largest road construction project in the UK at the moment. Uh, it's a 1.5 billion pound joint venture between Costain, Skanska, and Balfour Beatty. And James is joining us from uh, his London office and he's, uh, he'll be happy to share his tips and experiences for process automation. Welcome along, James. Hi, thank you. Our third panelist today is Trassa Kaneen, and she's a solutions architect at Goal. Goal is an international humanitarian aid agency, and she's joining us from her Limerick office in Ireland, and Trassa will share insights on how Goal have transformed processes for their remote aid workers and internally. Welcome, Tressa. Hi, Shay. How are you? Very good. Thanks. All good. All good. So, um, just with today's uh, format, we're going to be discussing um, some of the trends that have been highlighted by Forrester Research uh, recently, and we've broken them down into three sections. And the the first discussion is basically here, as you can see on the screen, that digital transformation demands automation of hundreds or thousands of operating processes, work best led by process owners, if not completed by them. Now we are gonna have a, a poll that's gonna pop up on your screens uh, any moment. And if you can just give your insight, that would be marvelous, it'll only take a second or so. Um, I. As with a lot of the Forrester insights, I personally agree with the statement that, yeah, we all know that there are hundreds of, of uh, uh, processes out there to be, to be done and the best people to do it are gonna be the process owners um, and because they know it best. But hey, that's just my input. So 
first of all, James, I'd like to start with you on this one. Um, the A14 has been using Flowforma uh, process automation for a couple of years now. And as you're the IT manager there, so I just want to get your input as, do you agree with that process automation is best led by the owners? And what have you automated to date? Um, I'm sure people would like to hear your, your first-hand uh, input on this. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely 100% agree with that statement. Um, it's quite an interesting one. Obviously, working on a joint venture is quite a, a different scenario because these projects are short-lived, three or four-year periods, and come together very quickly and obviously here for a finite period of time. Um, because we're an amalgamation of numerous of three different entities, um, obviously us trying to translate their requirements from an IT point of view and own those processes is very difficult. Uh, we found, obviously, with the use of Flowforma, that the engagement and the buy-in from the business is far greater and the way that that process is accepted into the business and the way it integrates back into the business in terms of automation. If it's actually designed and they have control and are empowered to maintain it moving forward. So it's made quite a lot of difference. I think um, as a, an illustration of that, probably one of our probably most efficient uses of Flowforma, I suppose, has been a requisition process. So. Obviously on a construction job, you can imagine we're purchasing materials daily um, in large quantities, whether that's aggregates, concrete, um, or even down to IT equipment and office supplies. Um, that previously was very much a paper-based process where people would shuffle paper from desk to desk, producing sign off, and then obviously go through the buyers. Um, we've automated that process. We worked with the guys from the buying department to obviously create the flow. But now um, I have oversight of it. If they want to do a new release or they update it, so they do that in UAT. But they completely own that process, which makes perfect sense because obviously they know what they want. They understand the process they've got to go through, whereas I would be looking at it from the outside. So absolutely, it makes sense. We've done that with um, as many processes as we can. Basically, we try to um, make sure that the guys are upskilled to be able to do it, not too challenged by it. And then obviously they maintain and own it. Um, a fairly simple version of that would be, um, we have a lot of site visits, people attending and wanting to come and have a look around the site. That's now owned and run by the office managers. Um, another very com complex one is a permit to dig. So we have a utilities team um, that have to mark out three, uh, three meter square areas where they're looking for utilities when people want to go and do trial holes and dig. And um, I wouldn't have a clue what that means entirely on across a 31 kilometer scheme. Um, the guys now own and run that process entirely on their own themselves. And all I do is validate and make sure they conform to standards that we've got. So yeah, completely and utterly, it makes such a difference. And also it yeah. means we don't have to be the master of so many different processes as well. Yeah, so I was just thinking there, like, so because you have the different organizations that you're, you're pulling together, a big thing here would be the standardization of those processes. So instead of having three different types of forms coming in, you know, and, and it would have been manual in some cases, you're now going to have the one type of data all standardized that you can yeah. report, I presume. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so, that's I mean, the one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. One of the main reasons for no, 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 I'm just saying that, that yeah, days. that. Yeah, that sort of um, meeting of the minds and coming up with, with that uh, one way of doing it, I'd say it obviously simplifies everything then as a result. Yeah, completely and utterly. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows the process, everyone understands the process. And at the end of the day, we're very much focused on reporting and data analysis. So we're capturing you know data wherever we can and in a uniform yeah, manner to, as well. Yeah, to have that in three different formats would be a bit of a nightmare, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, indeed, and it still does exist, and given time, we'll eradicate that more and more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because I, I, I can just imagine, I mean, you're dealing with three separate companies together, so then even if it was three different, uh, with any organization that might have, you know, umbrella companies, to standardize in the process was probably the first thing you, you did. Well, I, I I'm, I'm don't want to put words in your mouth, but you basically have to come up with the single format for these uh, processes. Indeed, and if you look at the way um, it tends to happen with the joint ventures, um, everyone has their way of doing it and predominantly believes their way is the best way. So it's um, developing that consensus and then working out a solution that fits all so that we have one way of doing it across the joint venture. Yeah, cool. 
Okay, thanks, James, for that. That's excellent stuff. Um, just trusted the. Just wanted to ask you from Gold's point of view, uh, you guys have automated some crucial processes um, and I know you have a distributed workforce. Um, can you share an example with us of so, something that uh, you helped, that Flow Pharma helped you with or that the sort of, uh, you're going, you wanted to cultivate champions uh, within your organization that even though you're doing it at the moment, that uh, I know it, it's it's in the back of your head. Hey, I want more people to be able to do this to to now uh, speed this along. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we're based in um, we have uh, offices in thirteen different countries across the world. Um, so um, like um, like James, um, we're trying to kind of standardise a lot of our processes um, and trying to streamline them. So. Um, you know, we've we've done that with quite a few um, processes so far. So some HR processes like um, request recruit joiners and leavers. And um, we have flight request approval systems. Um, we also have one of the kind of most recent um, processes that we've automated is the EPRF system which is a payment request um, system um, and it yeah. goes through the field and then through head office just depending on specific levels of of payment levels um, and approvals that are needed so it at the moment that goes through an approval within country depending on um, specific checklists it needs to it might need to go through an approval within head office um, and we can push back you know from head office to the field or from the field back to head office and and kind of automate that process um, before it was done through email um, and through spreadsheets and um, it was quite difficult to actually um, see where the processes were and where the gaps were um, you know why things were taking so long why things were not being filled out correctly and um, that kind of information so it's really streamlined that process um, for us. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned sorry Tressa it's funny you mentioned the, the email and uh, spreadsheets etc you, you may or may not know, but the vast majority of companies, they reckon, say, in the US alone, uh, between nine and 10 companies are still operating as that the, where their email and spreadsheets, et cetera, are the central source of the truth. So obviously, you try to get away from all of that. Yeah, it's a huge thing for us. I think especially just the visibility of where things are in a process. So, um, you know, an email might be sent, it might not be re responded to, um, it might be forwarded, it might not be the, the current version of the truth. And it's very hard to kind of, um, you know, even report on that or be able to actually see where the where the actual um, process is at, at any particular time. So I think that's a real um, bonus point for us. Um, yeah, so it, I, I guess as you're system. saying, the, the standardization of the process in the first place and then now as you're saying the visibility with such disparate locations 13 uh, countries and obviously people within those countries in different locations exactly having yeah. visibility at all is is such so important I, I wouldn't want to be relying on my inbox for that I have to say yeah and, and it's visibility from um, you know a management of a process level but also even from yourself so you can see how many processes are wait are waiting you so you can you yeah. can go in and see you know what's in what's outstanding for me and then what's outstanding for everybody which I think is really helpful too yeah yeah that's brilliant i mean it, it's funny when you you see you hear the first hand uh, examples i'm always baffled like by some of the processes that there's no way i would even think of those scenarios you have to be like this is the whole business the process owner you have to be immersed in this to know exactly what processes you need to be dealing with i couldn't tell you about that you are the only one that could tell me about that it's incredible <laughs> thanks Tressa. yeah uh, so justin um uh, from your point of view, uh, I know you started looking at processes and you had that foresight that you wanted to digitize everything and you knew that there was tons of that, that were there that you could uh, take care of. Can you give me an example of what you decided to do just in regards to the fact that you were the process owner and what you did to uh, complete these processes? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that uh, one of the biggest changes for us at McKinley Irvin was uh, exactly what Tressa was saying, you know, living inside of the inbox, uh, you know, having to regulate ourselves and, you know, look for the triggers um, that would guide us through our original processes and then try to act on them. Uh, 
but instead move move over to this digitization, this process, actual process automation uh, with Flowforma. And one of our biggest uh, initiatives was to get our uh, client closeout process uh, sort of integrated into this uh, digitization initiative. So that we, were, we did indeed have to work with a lot of process owners across our uh, legal teams, across our accounting teams, and uh, it absolutely requires their uh, you know, participation to say the least, but you really have to, I would say you really have to meet your process owners halfway. Uh, if you can have them lead the work, that's fantastic. Um, sometimes it's going to be collecting uh, their standards and their requirements and then, you know, really helping them along uh, and guiding them through that process. I know that you had looked at all of these, um, this scenario uh, initially and you basically realized, listen, we need to uh standardize and uh, we need to make sure that all of these processes are standardized did did the introduction of that uh, help with everybody like finally when you came up with the here's the final draft did it focus everybody's minds on yeah okay we just get stuck in with this and this is our process yeah absolutely with uh, you know frankly with some resistance because you know change is always going to be a little challenging but uh, yeah, well, especially when you're dealing with multiple um, offices, um, as we've heard a couple of, of cases today. So you've got people, you know, spread across some disparate geography. You've got slightly different processes, slightly different standards uh, across an organization or across multiple organizations. Uh, the ability to guide people into a single form and with some options to account for these different needs, but have them, again, pointed back into sort of the 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 sort of the mothership get them back into the the single method of working yeah. with the company as a whole uh, is is really yeah. critical and uh, and invaluable. Brilliant. I, I was just just thinking there, uh, James. Just in regards to uh, the processes themselves, how long did it take to say deploy uh, your first process? Now it doesn't have to be your first process, but one of your example processes that you did. How long did it take to deploy? say in comparison to to uh, what you may have done in the past um i mean well i suppose it's it's quicker from the point of view if the understanding is there because we're bringing along the process owners and they can be directly involved in what we're doing um something like the materials requisition plant materials requisition probably took some in the region about six weeks um, but obviously you can imagine we've got to get that out over to eight different offices on a construction site to two and a half thousand people so Probably a, there was a good couple of weeks of training on that as well, so that's a, a fair yeah. element of it. Um, uh, it just depends on the complexity. We've done some that we've managed to do within a matter of days um, from yeah. start to finish. So yeah, um, far quicker than the previous we were developing on SharePoint, and I would say that uh, yeah. it would take quite a bit of longer and normally a bit of rework as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so we're just going to pop on to the the next uh, discussion but before i jump into that uh, we had a poll there uh, on the first question and basically it was um the question was who should lead process automation would it be it business or business governed by it so seven percent came back saying be it 36 percent saying the, uh, business and then the majority 57 percent saying that it was business governed by it um, so just interesting. I mean, there, we can we'll probably feed these results back at the end of it anyway. But it's just to to give you an update. And I'm, again, really appreciate people actually giving their opinions on this because it it, it does help um, in sort of learning uh, what people are looking at. Because the reality is, you can have every analyst in the world, but it's always uh, consumers of the product, it's always the business owners, always the people in business who have, it's your experience and it's it's your opinions that count. So I'm just gonna pop into the the second um, questionnaire discussion. Um, and again, I want to ask the panel about this one. So customer obsessed transformation has pushed automation front and center, but it's difficult to choose among automation tools. That this is really common and we come across this all the time and you know it's totally understandable people say right i want to go and digitize i want to get my processes digitized but you have to choose between the tools because there's a lot out there and there's a lot of conflicting information there's a lot of marketing information and so 
you basically have to end up making a choice at some stage. Um, Travis, I just want to begin with you and by asking, by asking you what encourage. Well, before I, I ask you the question again, you'll, you'll notice that the poll popped up and answered that question. When you get an opportunity, it'd be marvelous. It'd just be there for a, a few seconds more. Um, but Trasa, I, I might start with you um, on this uh, question about uh, the, the choosing uh, um, among the automation tools. So what sort of route did, uh, when Goal were addressing this scenario to go down the process automation route, what were the requirements that you put together? So you would have said to yourself, hey, this is what I need. What were those requirements? Yeah, so I suppose, um, like, we use Office 365, so um, we needed something that would integrate with our um, our current platform. So that was um, one of the, the first things that we, um, one of our first requirements. Um, we wanted something that was um, easy to use, um, so that we could um, eventually, you know, have our, our champions, our, our business pro process automation champions um, and take ownership within the business. Um, so that was another thing. Um, I suppose um, just how quickly we could actually um, automate our processes. So I think um, for us, like one of the biggest challenges for us is to actually document what our process is <laughs> um, yeah. and, and define what our process should be um, and, yeah. and standardize that across um, you know, our, our whole um, organization. So um, it, we just needed something then that would actually make it easy to roll out that process and to automate that process. Um, and okay. I suppose the last thing then is just uh, we needed a, a product with some good support. So, um, you know, um, there are, as you say, there are lots and lots of, of options out there. So um, we did need something yeah. that, you know, where we could actually reach out to some um, techies um, to give us some support if we needed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I can only imagine. I, I mean, the... The way the sort of industry has changed, like so you would find a lot of information online would be centered around BPM, so you know, business process management. And uh, we find this just that it's such a big area because you have a lot of legacy systems there that um, you'll find a lot of information on, but they require like tons of coding and so on. Did you find it tough to sort of uh, I don't say breakthrough, but uh, I actually, somebody described it to me as we need a jungle guide to get us through all of the information that is there and to try and find our path. Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't have a huge um, development team within Goal and um, within the IT department yeah. in Goal. So um, it was really important for us to get like kind of an, a no code, low code um, solution as well. Um, yeah. I suppose it is a jungle. <laughs> That's exactly the, yeah. the right way to to say it. But yeah, um, yeah. It's just a matter Thanks, Trasa. Thanks, a million. Yeah, Dustin. Uh, just for yourself, um, I know integration with Office three six five. That was pretty high on your uh, list of things, um, and probably important to the guys in McKinley Irvine. Can you? What was your experience in searching for for the correct solution? Oh, it's incredibly difficult. Uh, as as you both have said, it's uh, there's more than a few options out there, and I, I think it's fair to say that a lot of people aren't really going to know exactly what your requirements are, you know, until you're in the middle of the process, you know, well after the the selection. So that that doesn't necessarily make the process for uh, for folks all all that much easier. Um, it is one of the reasons why I would very much uh, recommend uh, the Sure Start. Um, program that you offer uh, that, yeah. that very much made the the onboarding and the and the startup process uh, such, such such a life changer on that one so yeah. much easier to to dive in uh, get that first process rolling and uh, and make that happen um, so yeah being being supported um, getting that uh, low code integration going and really just uh, allowing ourselves the ability to, to really get started quickly and, uh, and actually turning over some results uh, has, is always going to help the business, you know, support that initiative all the more. All things yeah, it's, to it's, make that process easier. It's funny you say, it's, it's very important things you said there, but you may not know exactly 
what you want until you've actually started. Um, we would have a lot of inquiries from uh, different organizations who have started down a path and find, you know, it's just not fitting uh, what they need to do. Um, be it down to a no code scenario, low code that people don't want to script, or maybe it's a K, it could be any number of things, but for some reason it's just not fitting and they, they come in and they inquire. And it's a really tough thing to do. Um, now, the sure start we have is, is yeah, it, it's basically to onboard new customers. But I was kind of thinking as well, how much you got from the trial when you did it. Did you get a lot of um, comfort for when you're actually allowed to do things yourself? I did. Yeah, the, the trial that you can, uh, in, my, in my understanding, pretty rare amongst uh, business process automation solutions, the ability to actually fire up a trial and really kick the tires, uh, have a chance to develop some relatively, you know, uh, quick start applications, get an idea of the, the technology feel and perhaps even uh, roll it out in a tentative fashion to some of your uh, business owners. Uh, that, that definitely makes a big deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, even though, okay, Foform is our product, which is, which is great. I would, the last thing you want to do is have a, a client sign up and not really want that. You know, they want something completely different. Hence why the trial environment is there. And I would always in, uh, encourage people that, hey, give something, give it a go. Like try it out yourself and then be convinced. And, you know, it's nearly a case of, I, I don't exactly want you to believe us. Just try it yourself and prove it to yourself. I think that doing it first time probably makes a, a massive difference. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I am um, just, I just, I mean, with, that, with any of these chats or any of these discussions we're having here, just remember guys, anybody who's on the, uh, who's on the webinar, um, the non-panelists there, you can ask questions on our chat throughout. So you don't have to wait to the end, just pop into the chat. We have guys here who are going through the questions and we have some already, which we will try and get to. But just to remind you, especially when we're in the middle of a discussion, if something uh, tweaks in your mind, just jot it down. Uh, say if we don't get to it, we will try and get to it uh, after the webinar. Um, just uh, still on this sort of a, uh, this, choice question and, and um, getting through that that jungle. Uh, James, I, I know you uh, have immersed yourself in sort of the, the technical end of things and what sort of process do you guys go through? Because I know that a big thing for you is mobile mobility and you know, with such a, a large scale of a project over 30 square miles, um, mobile um, access was really important. So how how was your uh, process of selection? How did that go? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We've got guys out in the field who are out in the field eight, nine, ten hours a day. So um, obviously quite a complex job. We don't want them traveling back into offices and so forth. So the ability to have a, a, a tool that we can use on a device that um, enables them to use it when they're out in the field and work offline. Um, a lot of the site is obviously greenfield, so comms links are relatively poor. Um, we spent a long time, to be fair, as part of the mobilization, we probably spent about 12 months evaluating um, products um, to some of the earlier points. Obviously, we're a relatively small team. We were in the process of mobilizing, so it's not like we were concentrating on this one thing. Um, and yeah, we, 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 did, we did struggle to find technology that would offer us the, the ability to have um, mobile devices and allow things to operate offline. Um, interestingly enough, uh, again, I'd second the point that Dustin made. I think um, part of the win for me with Flayformer was the ability to be able to try that. And I could actually walk out on the job, drive out on the job and actually test the ability and see how that synchronization works. Um, we looked at other products like Nintex and K2, but unfortunately they still retained the complexity and the dependency on the IT department. Um, and we just simply aren't big enough to deal with the volume of processes we're looking to automate. So yeah, 100%. I mean, if we didn't, if, if that wasn't in the product, then we wouldn't have um, been able to use it because it's something we absolutely have to have. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, again, I, I, I am familiar with the fact of, of you taking a lot of time in, in assessing the uh, the features and the functionality within, within the tool. And 
and you've, all of your feedback was always really welcome. So, I mean, even in some cases, the guys would uh, put into our roadmap enhancements, et cetera, just to make sure that, hey, and again, this is where the first hand experience comes, uh, comes in so well for us because we can decide, make all the decisions we want on how a product should or shouldn't be. But the only way you're going to get proper input is when somebody actually uses it. And uh, I know you uh, made sure that uh, not uh, all of your ideas uh, were heard, <laughs> which was <laughs> which was great. Indeed, I, uh, yeah. Uh, for us, I mean, one of those, I suppose, going back to when we looked at it towards the end of 2016, one of the most important things was when we're out on site, the guys are capturing a lot of imagery. Um, and I'm, I think I remember, recollect yeah. that you guys did something around putting that into your roadmap. And I think we got it within the space of about four weeks. I think it went into the next cycle of release, actually. So, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, and again, it, it's the type of thing where, you know, when you're reactive to what a client wants, it, basically we have a list of items in our roadmap and it's always, you know, as you can imagine, we always get inputs, but then it comes down to importance. And when we find out somebody says, listen, I really need this. And we find out then from other clients, yeah, I'd love that too. It shoots to the top of the list, which is great. And uh, then everybody benefits, which is marvelous. Um, just from that, um, just to finish off on, on sort of this point, um, would there be any anything that you would think of as so if you're assessing a tool, any any um, nuggets of, of uh, information that you say no when you're looking, make sure you look for X or Y. Would there be anything that you could any advice you could give on that, Dustin? Maybe do you have any? Yeah, uh, for me, it really was the make sure the make sure the system is going to to play nice with um, with with really the tools that you have. Uh, you want to make sure that this is going to really plug into your organization and make sure that the data formatting is going to work for you. Make sure that uh, you know, roughly speaking, your 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 customers, your consumers of this product are going to be you know familiar with this idea uh, and. Yeah, for what that meant for us was a something that's going to integrate with with SharePoint, the Microsoft platform, O365. Uh, for other folks, that might be a little bit different. Uh, you know, I recommend they they take a look at that and, and see what's important to them. Uh, certainly, the the ability to uh, to get up in a no code environment was was a big one for us. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it's funny when it, you say that because some uh, companies don't describe scripting as coding. And I had this conversation yesterday with somebody saying that, yeah, for somebody who's never done scripting, scripting is definitely coding. <laughs> but, yeah. um, Elitists. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, we had, just uh, finishing off, we had a, a, the poll there at the start of the question, and the poll was, uh, what are your requirements for an automation tool? So we had um, a list of, of, the, of options and, 100% of respondents uh, identified no code and integration with Office 365. So basically they were the two that stood out, the rest they completely ignored. So the no code and integration with Office 365 seems to uh, align with what uh, you guys are saying. Um, you pretty much all said that in your responses. So that's, uh, seen, as I say, we seem to be aligned there well. Um, just gonna move on to our, uh, our final question, and uh, and that is uh, a trend that is kind of um, it's an emerging one from a an importance point of view, and that's to quote: "It's when your processes engage partners and customers that the benefits become game changing." And um, again, we're going to have a bit of a poll here. Um, guys are going to throw up a, a question and if you would give your response, that would be marvellous. This question or this sort of focus uh, where the uh, third party slash outward facing uh, people bring them into your processes, uh, that's, it's funny, from an evolution part in uh, data transformation and digitising a process, that's becoming very important. Um, just from uh, your own experiences so far, James, for example, I know the A14 uses uh, 
flow forma engage or as you would have known as path at the time uh, which was public accessible forms uh, to engage external users in multiple processes um, how important was that for you and um, just tell me about them about what, what you did yeah I mean it's um, very important to be honest we've got um, quite a lot well obviously you can imagine a large supply chain um, that we're dealing with on a daily basis um, they don't necessarily want to bring them into our Office 365 tenancy, but there are certain elements of data that we would like to capture for them and enable them to be able to interact. Um, and I suppose in other cases, things along the lines of, um, say, our site visit requests, we want to publicise the fact that we're offering site visit requests to people, um, but not necessarily have yet another system that then feeds that data into Flowformer. So the ability for us to be able to publish Flowforma externally and enable people to access it has been um, well, excellent. I mean, there are certain things we wouldn't be able to do with it, I suppose. Um, to name one of those, with our supply chain on a weekly basis, we have stats that we need to provide back into our end client around um, trainees and people on the job, people leaving the job and so forth. So that includes the supply chain. So we yeah. have uh, something called weekly supply chain data capture, which is a form that's out there in the ether for the supply chain to fill in um, and then that obviously kicks off an internal process for us but it's all within the ecosystem I suppose of Flowforma so yeah um, we've got probably 15 16 processes that are sat out there that people can interact with which means we don't have to provision that Office 365 license yeah so you've got now basically uh, you don't even have to think about the numbers of people engaging on this you just have to give them the facility Indeed, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, it, it is something that comes up quite a lot and when people are considering, and I think they nearly answer the question for themselves at the start, which they shouldn't do, but basically say, thinking to themselves, oh, if I want to bring in externals, I'm going to have to give them licenses, I'm going to have to do all this sort of thing, or else I'm going to have to code, you know, new web facing forms, all that sort of thing. And they never even, check to see you know, can we do something else like can we just uh, enhance the product you know use some of the functionality that's there um, and I th they just focus internally but you James like you had this as one of your real requirements at the very uh, we did, start indeed. of the project yeah yeah indeed because of the way that the project set up yeah yeah i mean dustin just on that i know uh you guys have been investigating um the use of flow form engage but you have some very interesting uh reasons for it and uh i can only imagine from a, a legal firm's point of view uh, it could be a big changer tell us how that came into your thought process yeah i i view this as a as a very natural progression for for law firms in general because there's there's a huge amount of communication that takes place between uh the customer the client in this case um, and ourselves you know there's a there's a massive amount of data and requests flowing back and forth between the client and the firm and this is i think just again kind of the natural extension of a, of a process automation system because if you're if you're only staying within the bounds of the firm itself and you know and only direct employees are getting it you're not you're not really you know touching the whole ecosystem that, that people are working with most of the work is going to take yeah. place between yourselves and the client in in, in many you know uh, service driven industries ourselves included so that's why we are we are very much looking at um uh, sort of flexing the the engage portion to make sure that we can get that out to the client start collecting the client data earlier in the process and then continuing that conversation via Flowforma as we go we're already using uh, Flowforma to distribute uh, polling information um, to our former clients and we're Great. we're definitely looking lo definitely looking to sort of increase that uh, that that portion uh, expand oh, that into good. yeah up and down Oh, excellent. I mean, um, <clears throat> it's because it is from an evolution of an organisation. Now, you, you, there are some organisations who basically came to us initially, and it was just listen, we need an external facing um, process. We need to, to do this externally, and had gone down the route of looking at uh, again 
coded versions. I mean, everybody thinks I'm gonna to have to find a programmer. I'm gonna to have to find a company to program this. And like um, here in Ireland, we had a, a couple of organizations who would do their uh, police vetting. So the vetting of um, coaches, underage coaches and that sort of thing online. They do it, the, the GAA here was a half a million members in it and the, and the bus service in Ireland called Bus Air. And they both do exter this external facing uh, forms. Um, through Phil Forma, and again, it just it simplified everything because they were able to do uh, everything themselves. And James, as as on the panel, as one of the people who've actually you've you've uh, done this yourself, how and and um, uh, obviously from a, a, a say a transparency point of view, what was your sort of feeling on, on creating those processes versus creating internal ones? Um, to be honest, the way that they've tend to evolve, it's um, normally the front sort of portion of the process that we're exposing. Um, yeah. So it's, it's been very simplistic, very easy. Um, we've normally focused on the internal process and then once we've nailed the internal process, we've looked to um, migrate that over to the Azure, Azure instance and gone from yeah. there. So it's, it's very straightforward, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. And it's just, I mean, it's basically for anybody, I mean, uh, even because I'm looking at the poll results here and we were asking people how, you know, how do they feel about engaging external users in processes and 55% say that they want to do it and 45% say they'd like to find out about it. Now, um, from our point of view, it's a very, so if you're sort of taking on um, a process that requires an anonymous user, so somebody who doesn't have login credentials, as you describe it, James, you literally have the first section of the process externally facing, and then you continue the rest internally. So instead of, you, you look at the internal process, and then you just have that kickoff part externally. And that's pretty much what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, completely. Yeah, it's as simple and straightforward as that, to be honest. Just wanted to ask you, just to finish off on the engage part of the external. Um, have, would you guys in goal, I know you haven't looked at it yet because it's been a lot about, and it's a big job organizing the internal uh, processes, but would you see a, a benefit to uh, engaging externals? Yeah, definitely. So um, as you say, yeah, we have been kind of focusing on internal processes um, and just streamlining those. Um, but I definitely think it could be something that we'd look at in the future. It makes It makes sense. Ah, very good. Thanks again, guys, just for, for the, uh, your input on all of those uh, trends. Now, I'm just going to ask you to hang around a short uh, while longer because we have had a few questions come in um, and we had them actually they, some came in uh, as a result of uh, registering for the, for the whole webinar and others have been coming in since. Um, James, I might start with you on this one. Um, we have uh, John from the US, John Gallar was asking, uh, what are the biggest challenges to implementing automated solutions for business processes? Um, and what efforts are being made to address them? Now, I think he's specifically looking here because he has a couple more caveats on to this question, but basically looking at um, cost effectiveness and um, so when you're presenting to management, I guess, so when you're pleading your case, uh, what sort of, what were your challenges in regards to the questions being put towards you? Yeah, I suppose one of the key things is um, obviously understanding the metric that means you can demonstrate that it is going to have some kind of efficiency in saving. Um, I think it's something I always struggle with. It's quite a challenging one in terms of um, realizing those benefits at the back of it. You may know that um, you're releasing somebody's time, but how do you guarantee that person is more effective at doing something else because you've freed up that time? Um, it's a difficult one, obviously, as part of the joint yeah. venture part of what we do is have to present back any efficiencies and benefits to ultimately our end client which is highways england that owns the infrastructure within the uk um, and it, it's 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 an interesting one it's quite a topic for discussion i suppose um, quite a lot of our selling points have been around the data so we're very heavily into power bi reporting and one of the things that using Flowformer has, has brought to the table for us is consistency in the way that we capture data and the way that we present data so that's yeah. probably one of the key benefits for this process automation is is around that 
understanding and capturing of data. And obviously the speed of turning that around um, <laughs> helps everybody. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the way that we can we can create processes a lot quicker than we could when we were developing them and say on SharePoint makes quite yeah, a difference. Yeah. So hopefully that um, answers your question. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Thanks. Thanks a million, James. Um, we have uh, Clyde from, uh, or actually, Joanna Galvin from the Netherlands has been asking, uh, and Trasa, I might ask you this one, uh, how can I help a beginner to design their first process? So what would you do? I'm putting you on the spot now. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I suppose um, defining the process is the first step. Um, so, yeah. you know, what, what's the current process? Um, how can we make that process better? Um, and yeah. how can we streamline it? Um, and then I guess it's a matter of, um, you know, depending on the user's, um, you know, technical literacy, um, yeah. maybe just sitting down, you know, starting with your, your SharePoint site um, and sitting down and working through how would you gather the information that you need and what needs yeah. to happen next. So actually, I think like the biggest part for us um, a lot of the time is actually defining the process and making sure that it's it's it makes sense for all the scenarios within goal yeah. or for the scenarios that we're facing the the actual um the flow form part of it is is yeah. much more simple i think really yeah. i think it's a matter of just sitting down with somebody um you know obviously um get there's lots of webinars like this and there's lots of training videos and stuff like that um you know letting them become a bit familiar with that but then actually just sitting down and hand holding a little bit just to to walk yeah. through the process and I guess, I suppose, uh, you'd have no fear in just diving in and say, listen, let's just even uh, prototype this uh, idea for a process. You'd have no fear in letting a, a beginner with a little bit of help from yourself just get stuck in. Exactly. Uh, you, yeah. you can't really break anything. I mean, especially um, with the sandbox solution. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if um, everybody knows about that, but um, yeah. there, there's a facility that you can actually allow business users to create a, a process and then um, uh, to actually publish that once it's been reviewed and, and validated. Yeah, it's, it's bringing it through the, the governance uh, facility. Yeah, yeah, that, that would actually suit suit that very well um thanks Tristan. thanks for that okay. um i have another one here from satish kumar in the uae and uh dustin i might ask you this one um new processes in a large organization sometimes create soft issues now this is what he's asking here he's saying that some people feel insecure if decision making is automated so uh I think it's the whole concept of automation of processes to make them digital, that visibility. Do you get or can you get pushback on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, it's no, it's certainly nothing new to say that uh, people are always gonna be a little afraid about change. And especially when you have a really a, a platform that's, uh, that's coming in and and changing the way that people have done business for you know sometimes 20 years you are yeah. absolutely going to get some pushback uh it's it's uh you're very much going to need the buy-in of the uh, of the process owners uh, to help from the sort of the soft side uh and then don't underestimate training uh we've, we've talked a yeah. lot about training today um but i think that one of the first things that you uh that i would offer in that case to those folks that are giving you a little bit of that pushback is um, implement something small, implement something yeah. really small, simple, give them a few options on a form. And then, you know, if you, if possible, stand right over their shoulder as they go through it for the first time or uh, from a remote management system, you know, set up a share screen session and then walk them through the form. I think when people see, you know, when they actually click the buttons and when they realize that this isn't, uh, yeah, this isn't out of out of their league, out of their out of their capabilities. I think they're going to feel much more comfortable with it. Most pushback, okay. I think, I think comes from a place of uh, of fear, and, and yeah, training yeah. them and guiding them through will will help to alleviate that. Yeah, it's it's funny you say that. About we had uh, one organization who were trying to put in a really cryptic process as their first one, and uh, the the head guy there, the head uh, project leader on that just had a brainwave one day and picked a really simple process and said, listen, 
I'm going to implement this first. It took him a week from start to finish to get it agreed, etc. Implemented, it, and he basically felt that once the people their first interaction with this automated process, once that was it felt good, it would bring everything else along, and it seemed to have worked. So that would align with what you're saying, Justin. Like, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you might be looking at complex ones, which is fine, but try and bring in a couple to get uh, sort of people's. Uh, feet wet on it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting with the yeah. simpler, higher volume uh, processes, I would, I would very much say, yeah. Uh, yeah. is a, is a great, great place to get your, get your feet wet. Yeah, um, I've one more here that I well, hopefully have time for. Uh, Clyde Livingston in Australia. Um, uh, I might ask you this, James, um, and I think you've pretty much answered this yourself already, uh, but. The, the question is, what is the best way to measure process compliance or adoption? Um, and I guess it's around your data. But James, I'll, uh, I'll, if I can pose that question to you. I think you have answered it. <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> um, I, I mean, like I said, we are very heavily into Power BI. So um, yeah. an example of that, I suppose, one, of, one before we had the automated process, one of the biggest um, challenges we had was around the permit to dig, because that's a very manual process. It, it, probably involves about six different people um, and it would be passed around and we would find that guys people would would start the process paper-based absolutely fine and dandy um, because they want to achieve something which is to go and dig a hole in the ground getting them to close those permits out afterwards when they're paper-based was very difficult and you wouldn't necessarily have sight of them because it was a permit register on excel blah 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 now because we do it on flow former um, the utilities team can see on a daily basis um, how many have been raised, what stage they're at, and how many need closing. Because closing them in, in our eyes is equally as important as actually starting them off and doing the work. Sure. Um, and they, they now have a dashboard that they can see that instantly. And it went from, I think, some of the region of about 300 that were remaining open um, fell down quite rapidly. And they can just monitor that on a daily basis. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that, that, it's that, that oversight of what's going on. Oh, that's great. Um, I, I probably have time to squeeze one more question in and I'll start to answer this one, but it, guys, if you want to chime in, feel free. Um, well, the question is, is scalability, uh, from John, is scalability a requirement when choosing an automation tool? Um, now, I just, from our experience, we always feel that uh, clients should prove the point internally um, initially um, because they're going down in most cases a route where there has never been any automation so get in prove a point and then scale uh, after that so then get the bigger ones going but I don't know guys, that did, that wasn't always the case with, with, with you guys um, I mean so uh, Trasa I know that you are looking to scale so when you were choosing your tool, I presume that was in the back of your head that you're going to start in one place, but then expand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah okay. And I mean, Dustin, you you guys, you have got uh, different locations um, in uh, Seattle and, and in neighboring um, areas. So you also, I presume, have thought about that, that, hey, okay, it might work for me, but I need this to to move so sitting on office 365 etc helped you with all that it, it very much did yeah and our uh, like like many organizations you know you really do have to expand beyond you know one physical office whether you're reaching yeah. out to your yeah to your suppliers and to your to your customers or, or both uh yeah that that ability to expand and uh and really become a, yeah. a, a broad platform is, is essential yeah, I, I mean, from our point of view, sort of the decision to have uh, the platform as an app sitting on Office 365 enabled that scalability because basically you're letting Office 365 li do all the heavy lifting, you know. And again, I know you guys have all invested in, in that infrastructure and the cool thing is that you don't have to reinvest in new infrastructure just to get processes across your organization. But I mean, it's a it's a very it's a relevant um, question, and, and uh, again, thanks for your uh, input and that your feedback on it. Um, I think, guys, I'm 
delighted you could show up today. Um, really happy that we got through all of our questions and we got through all of our, our customer questions and, and uh, our attendee questions, etc. Um, and I know that you've taken time out of your busy schedules and um, Dustin, I know it's probably uh, early, really early hours for you. But again, just thanks again uh, to everybody who joined in. And just to let uh, anybody on uh, the webinar know that you can sign up for a 30 day trial of Flow Forward. Like try it out, just give it a, give it a bash. Um, we'll help you out. We'll show you the best things to do. It's a, the only thing it'll cost you is time. Um, you can we can demo to you first and maybe do a proof of concept with you if you like, uh, but definitely trying it out for yourself will help. It'll help you answer a lot of questions. It'll help you see the difference between coded solutions and no code platform. So we have reviews on G2 Crowd. Uh, please look it up. Please look up the website. Um, because like, we have a lot of case studies, we have a lot of information there that will help you as well before you even want to contact us. Guys, uh, James, Trasa, Dustin, thank you so much for today. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.